guys. Oh, that was way, way too enthusiastic. Hi guys, welcome to the latest and very long overdue, I apologize, installment of my GDL vlog in collaboration with lawcareers.net. Before we get into anything, um, make sure that you have followed me on social media. So my Twitter and my Instagram are all at Blessing Makosha. The links are below. Make sure you've checked out the blog which inspired this vlog series, blessingatthebar.com and subscribe to my law blog. Just click and hover on the tab law blog, enter your email address and you'll be given a weekly update of any new posts. And also make sure that you are following lawcareers.net on social media search lawcareers.net on Instagram and Twitter and make sure you are subscribed to their channel below. So I completed the GDL last June. Um, we thank God that I survived. As you guys know in my GDL vlog series I've been at City University completing the GDL. Very, not very different but slightly different to other centres in that we sit all of our exams as seven exams in one exam period at the end of the year. So it is very intense. So I've collected together a bunch of tips and advice I have for those of you tackling GDL exams. This advice is relevant to you even if you're not doing the GDL at somewhere where they sit the exams in all in one. These are also tips that you can use no matter when your exams are. So yeah, let's get on with it and I hope you enjoy. So the first tip I have is slightly obvious and please, please, please don't skip over this. This is not uni where you can get away with things like before. Do all of your work, attend every lecture, attend every tutorial, make good notes. If you don't have those notes there for you, the future version of yourself that's preparing for the exam is going to hate you. So make sure you have your notes down pat. If you miss things because life is life, then just um, make sure that you've caught up on the notes from somebody else, you've caught up on the notes independently, if you can grab any recordings of the lecture. I would thoroughly recommend that you don't miss tutorials. Tutorials, honestly. If it wasn't for tutorials, those crazy moments just before the exam when you're trying to figure out how you answer questions would have been much, much worse. With tutorials, you had notes, you had questions that your tutor, um, if they were good, should have gone through with you and the exam should mimic those tutorial questions. So make sure you do that first. Don't play yourself. Don't ever play yourself. Don't ever play yourself. Avoid stress by forming a game plan. So when I say form a game plan, I mean you need to know, first of all, simple things. What exams have I got? When are they? How many days do I have between each exam? Where am I at with each subject? Um, one thing I did, which I got on recommendation from my best friend, Laura, thank you, Laura, and my other best friend, Agochi, thank you, Agochi, um, is create a sort of table with each of your subjects and then use some sort of scale. You could use colors like red, amber, green. You could use one, two, and three, but indicate just off the bat where you are on those topics. So if there is a topic that you know, damn, I don't get this subject at all, this module has always confused me, put that in red or put that as um, three to say three is least prepared, one is most prepared. Um, and give yourself an overview before you begin. The next stage of your game plan will involve which topics will I revise? How many questions do you have to answer on the paper? Then you work your way through. So you figure out, okay, I know I need to answer four questions for each paper. Can I pick topics? My professors were notoriously unhelpful at times when I asked, like, you know, how do you go about picking topics? But you will find it out by yourself, especially when you combine your game plan with my next piece of advice, which is not to neglect past papers. So hit those past papers up. Once you've formed a game plan and you know, okay, I want to do these topics, I want to do that topic, I want to do that topic, then you get some past papers. Check your game plan against the past papers. Does that make sense? So if you thought, okay, right, I'm gonna pick six topics for crime, I'm gonna do da 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 it check the past papers. Because if with that selection, you would be sat in the exam like, ah, what? Then you need to go back and rethink your game plan. Likewise, check the mark schemes against your game plan. Because you might think a question is asking for something and then think, oh yes, yeah, six, so I'll revise that topic, easy check the mark scheme because you might very well be surprised and they wanted you to mix topics or different things came up learn those patterns i honestly probably spent about 
a week minimum doing that before I even thought about revision. Um, and having that game plan really helped me to avoid being stressed. So the next piece of advice is flashcards, flashcards, flashcards. Flashcards are your friends. That is where you will learn your cases. There were so many cases, there was no way they were just gonna be in my mind. Like, I had stuff to do. I had, every time I was revising one module, I had six others that needed to be done on top of, you know, human things like sleeping. So I had flashcards. So whilst I was on my way to the library, I would flashcard whichever topic I'd revised the day before. Or if you use Quizlet, then what Quizlet will do for you is create exercises. So you are constantly practicing, 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 practicing. It will tell you how far along you've got. So say you've learned 50% of the cases, you've learned 50% of your cards and it will set up exercises and games so you can learn how to do things that way. So another way to avoid being overwhelmed is to have an Excel spreadsheet. So what I had was for each of my modules, so this was after I'd created my game plan, I had my modules and then I color coded it. So green meant topic is revised, notes have been made, I'm ready for practice questions. Orange meant I've got notes, I just need to go through the notes, make them into revision notes, and then answer questions. And red means there is nothing there. Red means that I need to go all the way from learning what the content is, to making notes, to making revision notes, to making flashcards, to practicing questions. You don't want to be in the red. So if you've done what I suggested right at the beginning, you know, every lecture, every tutorial, everything, you won't have red gaps in your theoretical revision plan. You won't. But if, like me, you know, here and there, there were some things that I just skipped for reasons. I had a couple of red patches. So the aim was, when I was creating my game plan, avoid as many red patches as possible. But, you know, things happen. Sometimes you're going to need to have to revise a red patch for your exam. It's going to happen. You can do it. But if you've created that game plan and you avoid being overwhelmed by sorting things out visually, you'll be fine. The next bit of advice is definitely the most important one. I feel so passionately about this. Big yourself up big time. And what I mean by that is make sure that you feel like the superstar that you are. Because you wouldn't do this and you wouldn't go through this process if you didn't believe in yourself. You wouldn't be watching this video if you weren't determined to have as much success as you can. Take that energy and make sure that you remember that you are it. You are amazing. You are great. You are magnificent. You can do whatever you want to do in this world. Put your mind to it. Put your grind to it and you can do it. Like whatever it takes to motivate you for me it's music specifically female rap specifically Nicki Minaj for my friends it's boxing for my other friends it's climbing for whatever it is for you that makes you feel like you are it do it and make sure if it's a mantra that you have that you constantly repeat if it's a certain prayer that you have that you do a lot make sure you're doing that and before your exam do it but also before you revise so before you set out to tackle one of your topics maybe it could be one of your red topics but before you set out to tackle one of your topics tell yourself I am great I'm gonna smash this the information is gonna go into my head I'm gonna have a great day this is gonna be a good revision day back yourself back yourself back yourself make sure you're constantly backing yourself yes this is hard yes this is a challenge but you are up to the challenge and you will thrive and you will succeed and you will go on to be an amazing lawyer facts next thing is have a study buddy so my study buddy my heart goes out to her um if it wasn't for her those times where i was lying on the floor saying i cannot go on would not have ended as positively as they did and if it wasn't for her support, her kindness, the fact that I had her to speak to, the whole process would have been much, much more difficult. So yes, study buddy, for sure. Don't lock yourself away. There are people on your course, which I know if you bumped into them, you're friends with them, like you can make things happen. Have a study buddy, have someone to talk to who understands. The next thing is meme or memes if you're a widow. Memes are amazing. Like law memes are hilarious, both because they capture that despair that you're in, but with witty banter. F 
funny because you can share them with your course friends and you can all laugh and despair together. And also, it's surprisingly good revision. Like, you may not think memes can help you revise, but they really can. My course mates created their own Facebook page for memes and it's hilarious. I'm gonna put it in the link description below. It's so, so funny. But make sure you have some comic relief. You need it. And you need specific law student jokes. Other people just don't get it. Prepare your friends and family, especially if you're in a relationship because they're about to lose the person that they knew and loved. But you're gonna go into the zone. Like, you're gonna be in the zone. You know, I had to tell my mum, please stop calling me about random things like going to my auntie's barbecue i've got to study same thing with my boyfriend i was like hey i'm gonna go into revision soon so if you could just be as helpful as possible that would be great but prepare those people around you make sure they know what you need sometimes you may not be able to vocalize what you need but having people around you who are empathetic who are there for you who know that you know you're going to be tired as anything so you need some food those kinds of people the kinds of people who say come on get up and you're, we're going for a walk you need to get outside make sure you have people like that around you um and the last thing for preparing for the exams is believe in yourself remember like i said with bigging yourself but believe in yourself yes you can get to the end of this yes you will finish these exams and yes you will go and be an amazing lawyer okay when inside the exam room I, you know, have had a lot of exam nerves. It's been something I've historically struggled with, but I persevered this year and I overcame. Um, and one thing I would recommend to you is Rescue Remedy. If you feel stressed in the exams, you can feel panic. Um, I recommend Rescue Remedy and also learning how to self-meditate in the moment. Control your breathing, breathe through, and will yourself to the end of that exam paper. So tell yourself, I'm going to make it through this exam, I'm going to make it through this exam. Relax, look at the question and focus on how you break it down and you'll be fine. All right, I hope those tips help. I go into more depth on my blog, so if you want to read that, I will explain much more things, including structure, um, technique, all of that stuff. But yeah, um, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check into my GDL series as it continues and my BPTC series because I'll be starting that bar course in September. So yeah, peace guys.